Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about a new product from the people that brought you XR Photo. If you aren't familiar with XR Photo, it is basically an AI based keywording program that will automatically, based on AI, add keywords to your photos. I did a kind of a first look video there that I'll link to, and I won't be going into details about how XR Photo works in this video because I want to talk about XR Analytics. That is the new product from XR, and it works in conjunction with XR Photo. In fact, it's an add-on to XR Photo. It is a $39 product. I will put a link down below. It is an affiliate link. It does require you to have XR Photo first, and it must be XR Photo 1.3. So you can get XR Photo and XR Analytics at the link below if you're interested. I want to walk through what this tool is, what it does, how it's useful, how I'm using it, and some of the cool stuff you can do with it because the truth is it's really interesting. Now, I like data and I like kind of understanding trends and things like that, but the thing with data is data is data. What XR Analytics within XR Photo does is allow you to turn that data into information, and that information will allow you to make better decisions either while you're out shooting or better decisions in terms of your gear and things like that, as well as giving you a really good understanding of how you shoot, what you use, that sort of thing. Now, as I said, it's a $39 add-on. It requires version 1.3. Once you purchase that through the XR Photo store, they will email you a license key. Once you get that license key and you're in XR Photo, go into File and then Preferences, go over to this tab called License, and then just put in your email address and the license key and click on Register. Same way you did for XR Photo, or if you haven't done that yet, do that first and then do XR Analytics. But that's how you register the product once you get the key. It just basically has to be activated. It's essentially inside XR Photo 1.3 already, but you have to buy the license to activate it. So it took me a minute to figure that out. Hopefully that will help you guys. And what I want to do now is talk about what this is, show you what it is, and all the cool stuff you can do with it. So I have highlighted photos, which on this left-hand side is my sort of master folder. Underneath that, I've got different categorized folders. This is just how I organize my photos. So in Austin, I've got all these different folders, right? So for Europe, I've got the same thing. Now you may see some little bells versus green check marks. And just to let you know, if you look at this one, there's 1,037 kind of registered photos in that folder. 1,036 were analyzed. So I'm finding that in a couple of these folders, there's a photo here or a photo there that XR is unable to add keywords to. I will go back in and clean that up. Bottom line is 99 point something percent of my photos have been keyworded based on the AI. I need to go in and do some cleanup and also I need to go in and do some additional keywording where I go in and add keywords of my own. Haven't gotten to all that. This is a long term project so it doesn't happen overnight. But what I wanted to point out is I've highlighted photos which is my overall master folder that everything else is nested under. So in other words, it's looking at all 283,000 photos. What I want to do is check out some analytics on my 283,000 photos. So I go to extensions and if you go to analytics, you can just click on open analytics for current view. And when you do that, it will build a visualization which will then populate on your screen. You'll notice it says task in process and is preparing chart data. Give it a moment and then you will land on a screen like this. Now this is a donut chart and as you can see, as you hover over these different color coded sections, it's pointing out which camera I shot with and how many photographs I took with that camera. So out of my library, my old Sony A7 Mark II is the one I shot the most with, 66,426 photos. Part of that, a couple of generations, uh, I had a Nikon D700 full frame, shot about 58,000, had an Olympus, had an uh, Apple iPhone 6. I've also got a couple of folders of iPhone images in here. Uh, lots of different things, including my current camera, which is my new workhorse, my Sony A7R Mark III. I've got a little over 10,000 photos taken with that camera. And so you can see it's giving you all these different bits of information. But the cool thing is all of these are highlighted on the side. So as you scroll down and over these, you can take a look and see what camera was shot. And it will also point that out on the graph. But the cool thing is, and frankly, the really powerful thing is, it will also give you the option over here to change chart types. This is where you start to get into some fun. I'm going to give you some examples. I personally like pie charts quite a bit. And again, remember, I'm talking about data visualization. You're not just getting data like in a spreadsheet where you're like, gosh, I got to do some sorting and all this stuff. It's all visual analytics. Hey, we're photographers. A picture is worth a thousand words. Well, these pictures are probably worth thousands of dollars because they're going to help you figure out 
what gear you use, do you need to keep that gear? So for example, and I'll show you this in a minute, I had a particular Sony lens that I sold a while back. So I was like, I don't really feel like I'm using it. And I feel like I can do the same things with other lenses that I have that I use more because I wasn't taking advantage of the entire focal length of that lens. I will show you some examples of how that would have helped me had I had that information. But anyway, this is basically now a pie chart, same kind of thing, right? Versus a donut chart. But you've got various other elements here. I like this stack chart quite a bit. But actually, before I get into that, let me show you. You've got attributes down here. So instead of camera, I could go in and just click lens model. And, you know, I can come in and see back when I had an icon, I shot a lot with that wide angle lens. That's not really a surprise to me because I love wide angle lenses, which also comes into play when I tell you about that lens that I sold. Here's a 24 to 70 that I had for my Sony, an Olympus lens, a Sigma lens. That was on my first DSLR. Anyway, you can kind of go through and check all that out. But you'll notice there's second attribute, but it's not highlighted. If you click on it, nothing's happening. And that's because if you see and you hover there, it, the second chart type, or excuse me, the chart type has to be stack or heat map in order to get the second attribute. And that's where you really start getting into some of the cool fine tuning. So heat maps are interesting. Let me show you what a heat map is, by the way. As the name implies, the red or hotter versions are things that get more use. So again, I'm on camera model. No, I'm not. I'm on lens model. Sorry, I changed that. Um, but I could go and change this to camera. And then the second attribute is lens. And you can start to see one of my most popular combinations was, again, this is back when I had a Nikon, my wide angle lens with my full frame Nikon. Now, I'm not a whole lot of a heat map person. What I do like a lot is this stack chart because this is gonna give you effectively a bar chart that will show you all these different things that you've done based on the attributes that you're selecting. So I've got camera selected and lens model, and you can see it's stacking things accordingly. So what I wanna do is, this is my Sony a this second, this, this tallest one, if you will, because remember the most photos I had in here are from my Sony a7 Mark II. I don't currently use it, but I had it for probably four years, five years, and just shot a lot with it. Within that, the 24 to 70 is the one that I shot the most with, so that's good to know. Hey, that's a focal range that I use a lot, right? Over here, the 28 millimeter prime, okay, so 28, good to know as well. The wide angle, right, also good to know. Here it is, the 24 to 240. This is a lens that I sold that I was talking about. I shot 7,500 photos with it, and you might be thinking, Jim, 7,500, that's a lot of photos. Why did you get rid of it? Well, the reason I got rid of it is because I wasn't really using very much of that focal range. I wasn't going to 200 or 240 millimeters very often. Most often I was like sub 100. And so what I ended up doing is saying, I don't really need that 24 to 240. What I really need is a good, something that's gonna get me kind of a decent zoom range. And this, if you can see, is the 24 to 105. Now the thing is, I kind of got lucky making that decision. I mean, you have a feel, I'm sure, for what lenses you use most. But I was looking at some of my stuff and I was kind of going through some lens rationalization, let's call it. And I knew I wanted to buy that 24 to 105, but I thought, well, you know, that's it's a few bucks. What kind of things do I have that I don't use or that I've already got that same capability, but in a better lens? Like maybe I have a 24 prime that's a 2.8. Well, I've also got a 24 that's a 1.4. I should probably keep the 1.4. Maybe I don't need the 2.8. I had some redundancies, in other words. Having this tool would have helped me get to that decision quicker. I did it all on feel. And I'm happy with what I did, but what I could do is come in here and I could say, all right, I want to sort by lens model, and then I want to come in and I want to sort by focal length. And now you've got this really interesting chart that's showing me all the different lens models and the focal length that were used with them. So this is one where I can come in, and down here is my, where is it? Here it is. Here's my 24 to 240 that I sold. And you can see the, the most I shot with it with it was at 24 millimeters. Hey, no surprise, I already said I kind of like the wide angles, and I do, and I can get effectively the same 24 millimeters with this. Not to mention that I've got several other lenses that cover a 24 millimeter range, but with a brighter aperture. So if you look at this, you know, I have to go through all these. There's 28 millimeters, and then it gets to 70 and 40 and 52 and 49, and I had to go way up here until I got to something that really got my attention, and that is right there. At 240 millimeters, I shot that 256 times. Out of all the photos I shot with that lens, at the max focal length, I only shot it 256 times. Not really a whole lot, 
really, frankly, probably not worth keeping considering I shot with that lens thousands of times. Now there's some other focal lengths in here that get a little bit close. There's one that's, there's 134. That was 135 photos at 134 millimeters. Well, this is 105. I think I'm covered there, to be honest. I can zoom with my feet, so to speak. And as I keep going up here, there's a couple more that get close to 200. There's 208 millimeters, I shot it 44 times. 226 millimeters, I shot it 34 times, things like that. So you can kind of go through and do some intelligence or gather some intelligence around the usage of your gear to help you decide, hey, is this something I'm gonna use? Maybe I wanna sell it. I'm kind of thinking about that lens, but if I sell this lens to get that lens, am I gonna miss some things about this lens? And so that would have been really useful. Again, you probably have a good feel for what you use and don't use, but this is a great way to apply some intelligence around those decisions to help you rationalize kind of what you're doing. Now it could also come in handy by sorting over here on the right-hand side. Your second attribute could be your f-stop. That gives you, again, more intelligence about, hey, am I using this lens to its full capability? Let's say you have an f1.8 or 1.4, um, and then you've also got maybe an f2.8 or an f4 version of that same focal length in a different lens. Again, you could use this for rationalization to say, hey, am I using, you know, taking advantage of that capability? Do I need that capability? Do I need to have money wrapped up in something that I'm not taking advantage of? So it's a great way to do that kind of rationalization. And there's a really cool feature here, and that is I've selected f-stop, but you can also come in and, and do focal length as I showed you before. But the other thing too is you can do this focal length 35 millimeter. And so what that does is, if you recall, I've got a Olympus camera. Well, that's a crop factor of 2x compared to my full frame Sony. So if I change to focal length 35 millimeter, it converts anything from Olympus into the 35 millimeter equivalent. So I could come in and study that as well. Here's another interesting slice of the data, which is looking at lens model and exposure time. And so you can just come in here and see, again, more intelligence around what you're doing. You can also look on the left-hand side to see what kind of exposure times are being most commonly used. You can click on any of those. So if you wanted by camera, for example, you could change this to camera and then exposure time, and you could get a sense of what kind of exposures are you shooting. So you can search by exposure time if you're a, like a long exposure type photographer, which I love to do, but I don't do it all the time. Again, you could sort that, figure out those attributes and slice and dice the data in order to locate the photos. Because if you notice when you're up here, when you come in at something, let me find one. So here on this Sony uh, A7 Mark II at 25 seconds, I can click on that. And what it does is it shows me on the bottom film strip here, as you can see, any of these images shot with those attributes. So I can go in and quickly locate photos based on that data. Again, great way to understand what you're doing and sort it, slice it, dice it. Again, just get more intelligence around what you're shooting, how you're shooting, and what you're shooting with. Now you've got a bunch of additional capability as well. If you come down to the filter tab, you can filter by date. You can also come in by ratings and labels and flags, which I have not gone through and done all of that on my photos. You can even filter by keyword, not to mention the fact that you could also come up here, camera and also keyword, and I could choose keywords based on camera. Now again, I haven't gone through and done all the keywording that I need to do for all my images, but you can get a good idea over here of like Nikon D700, city, there's low contrast, there's building, there's nature, unsaturated, architecture. Uh, this is probably gonna say dark, yeah, because I also shot a lot of brackets, so I've got a lot of dark photos because they're part of a bracket set. So lots of different capability and filter options that you have there. You can just close that if you don't need it. Another cool thing you can do at the very bottom here is actually once you've got something sorted, you can save this as a PDF if you wanted to have it as a reference and just be able to go back and look at it. Pretty cool stuff, very powerful, lots of interesting and unique ways to look at your camera usage. Or I could come in and say, you know what I really wanna do? I'm planning a trip to Europe. Let me click on Europe and kind of see what I've done in the past because I, I love the kind of photos I've taken in Europe and I've got 96,000 photos from Europe. So I think I'll go over to extensions, go to analytics and say open analytics for current view. There's Europe. Go ahead and open that and let it build out this visualization for just my Europe photos. Okay, so what I wanna know is what lens have I mostly shot with and what focal length, because you know what I'm doing, let me find focal length, I'll just do it in 35 millimeter equivalents. And the reason is, hey, I'm going to Europe, I'm not really, I wish I was, but just as, you know, as an example of trip planning, hey, I've got this trip coming up to Europe or wherever it is, but I've got all this data on what I've done in the past, and I know some certain things I wanna shoot, but I wanna get a sense of what I've really done 
you know, like what gear have I used that I brought to Europe in the past versus not really used that much. And so you can come over here, 14 millimeter. I've got 12,000 photos that I shot at a very wide angle. There's 24 millimeters, there's 16 millimeters, there's 18, there's 15, there's 22, 20, 19, 17, 21, and 23. All of those are with that 14 to 24. So you know what? And by the way, that's the most photos out of all that I've taken in Europe. So I want a wide angle lens, that's for sure. But what about some other things? What about this zoom lens, this 28 to 300? Which I don't have any more, but let's pretend that I do. Well, it looks like I shot a lot at 28 millimeters. Well, guess what? My wide angle, this, this wide angle is 14 to 24, but my current wide angle, the Sony one, is a 16 to 35. So if I'm over here looking at this zoom, I might be thinking, do I need that extra focal length? Because I haven't historically shot that um, wide, or excuse me, that long there, I shoot mostly wide. So again, you can kind of go through, use all this data to help inform how you're going to pack for a trip. Because let's be honest, you can't really take everything. If you're like me, you might have a closet full of camera gear and lenses and all that kind of stuff. And while you might want to bring it all just in case, probably smart to go through, analyze what you've used in the past and get a sense of what you actually might need to pack on an upcoming trip. Now, another idea is to take a look at something like this and do it by camera and exposure time. Maybe I'm trying to figure out, all right, do I need my 10 stop filter? Am I gonna take a lot of really long exposures? Or can I get by with shorter exposures like two seconds, three seconds versus two minutes or three minutes? So maybe you come by and look at your exposure time history based on, again, these are all European trips because I'm still in my Europe folders and I can come through and take a look and say, okay, well, I've shot a fair amount at one second, you know, so maybe I'll need, you know, here's two seconds. Let me just keep going. If you look at this bottom, you can see that I've got quite a few pages to go. There's four pages. Uh, here's a 25 second. And then again, it shows you the photos down below. So you can kind of scroll through and get a sense of them. You know, here's 120 seconds. Okay, well, I'm not shooting very many two minute exposures, right? Maybe I realize. I don't need to bring my 10 stop. Maybe I just need a two stop or a three stop, or maybe I can stack a couple of those instead of packing everything. Again, great way to figure out what you do and what you you know actually use in the field versus what you bring just in case. So here's another way to look at the exposure time. I've got camera and exposure time, but I changed to heat map. So here you can see that these really quick snaps, one eight hundredth of a second, one fiftieth, one five hundredth, things like that. These are much more common than things like 90 seconds, 300 seconds, 40 seconds, whatever. So again, different ways to slice and dice the data, get these visualizations to work for you, really understand the data that you have in your current photos to help you either figure out what gear you're using, learn more about your shooting patterns, give you some ideas about things that you could try. Maybe you haven't done enough of X or Y, and this would indicate to you visually that you haven't. And so that might be something you say, you know what I really want to go try is to get better at X. So that's an overview of XR Analytics. Again, a component or add-on feature to XR Photo. $39 is at the link below. I'm having a lot of fun. Honestly, I'm just slicing and dicing data left and right and just checking it out because it's really informing uh, me in terms of what I do and what my habits are. Because again, you probably have a good idea what your habits are, but you may not know, you definitely actually don't know nearly as much as you would know once you kind of get in and do some analytics on it. It's very simple, very straightforward, very easy to use. As I said, it's essentially built into XR Photo already. Just have to buy a license key and activate it. Hope it gives you some ideas of how it works and things that you can do. I'm certainly open to suggestions. There's a lot more you can do. I'd love to hear what you're doing with it. If you want to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, my friends. Hope it gives you some ideas, and I will see you in the next video. So until then, you guys take care of yourselves, and adios.